Now we'll just quickly go through key themes in relation to the destruction of Native American society and look at which ones were the most important. So one of the biggest ones was the destruction of the buffalo. So this was so important to Native Americans because they used the buffalo in all aspects of the lifestyle, from eating, from clothes, etc. And white Americans ultimately destroyed this, but I don't think it's seen as a kind of a policy or like a specific plan that, they, that the white Americans had. So it seems to be more of a consequence of Westwood expansion than a deliberate policy, but nonetheless it was still paramount for the destruction of the American society, so we're going to talk about it. So the railways significantly were important for this. So hunting increased as a result of the railways, which because like buffaloes, they would do like hunting like expeditions like the train, so you can like go like poo outside the trains and kill a buffalo, you know. And also just constructing the railways themselves. You have to destroy a lot of land to get the space to build the railway. That split the plains in half as well, so it created like a northern and southern herd. And also with the also with the building of the railways, um White Americans took a lot of the land to like so the railway companies could sell it to settlers. And so again this is land that would have had Native Americans on it. This land that would have had buffaloes in it, so they would have had to kill the buffaloes to make space for the white Americans to... Also with the building of the railways, hunters were employed to kill the buffaloes for food, for the workers, so that's going to have an effect on them. And then in 1871, um, there was discovered that buffalo skin made lovely leather, and then like the tanning industry got stronger, and so after that point... Uh, buffaloes were used for that and again that massively contributed to their demise because they're being killed now for profit and Americans love profit so anything that can make profit then it's going to be destroyed um, so I said before the railway split the herd in two which splitting them up and it kills them all with taking the land in 1875 the southern herd were destroyed and by 1883 the northern herd were destroyed so at that point the Native Americans can't use the buffalo anymore for the parts of their lifestyle for every part of their lifestyle which they did before and they were so reliant on these buffaloes so without it they really couldn't continue their culture and um, also after the civil war weaponry got more advanced so they could shoot and the buffaloes and kill them at a quicker rate and more accuracy etc so that's also going to contribute to them being killed faster and more of them killed mining became a big factor in the destruction of the native americans so the key example of this is the California Gold Rush, 1848 to 1849, which gave settlers a reason to move west and travel across the continent. And all the destruction of the Native American society starts when the white Americans want to expand west for profit. So mine is obviously going to be a significant factor in this. There's other examples of this, so like in Montana and Colorado in 1858 to 1859, so just... 10 years after California, which again meant that prospectors who wanted to make an economic fortune through mining arrived on these lands, and these lands in particular were guaranteed to the Arafo and the Cheney with previous treaties, so inevitably that's going to cause conflict, and then the conflict ends in Native Americans being moved further west to further poor quality reservations, so destroys their way of life. Continued again with the gold on the Black Hills of Dakota, led to the Great Sioux Wall, led to the Sioux being moved further west. It's the same kind of process with every economic boom and every gold rush that you see. So these mineral discoveries were vital for the federal government in the sense that it gave them an excuse to break the treaties with Native Americans and gave an excuse to start conflict which is an excuse to move them further west. So it all kind of links together and it just ultimately destroys their way of life. We can also look at white Americans and their attitude towards Native Americans. So it seems to be a bit of a mixed bag as it always goes. Some were more sympathetic to Native Americans and didn't want them to have to suffer all the cruel treatment they did just for economic prosperity. But I think most kind of had the mindset that although it was sad what was happening to their society, their kind of suffering was inevitable and also 
almost acceptable in the pursuit of the American dream and profit and Manifest Destiny becomes a big symbol of this, the idea that Western expansion, it caused this clash between the two cultures but it was justified that the white Americans would be the victorious ones because it was their destiny. And it's very clear that the white Americans and like the USA's kind of the importance of profit, pursuit of profit, of land and stuff like that, really just contrast with the Native Americans' ideology of how the land can't be owed, but is owned by everybody, it's owned by the ancestors. So, I mean, it was inevitable that these two cultures had too strong of a divide, where one would have to prosper over the other. And it's just a shame who won. We can lastly look at the American army and their influence in oppressing Native Americans and their role in the conflicts between them. So ultimately they outnumbered the Native Americans by a mile and they had much superior weapons so they had guns and even though I think there were some examples of white Americans trading guns with Native Americans and them developing their own it was never to the same extent and the white Americans were always more military in that essence. Um, the American army also developed forts along like, the reservation along the plains which gave them control over the plains ultimately and they could like launch like attacks like quickly and then they could like wait it out in sieges and then like attack again. I'm not, I'm not an expert on military but I think you can get the gist that they can kind of like build these forts around the plains so they can almost like surround the Native Americans and be more victorious in battles like that. And also they used winter campaigns which were difficult for the Native Americans to combat because, I mean, they live with the families and have to leave the families for these winter com- campaigns which they won't want to do. And also, like, as far as, like, supplies go over the winter, they won't have the kind of food resources for that if they keep them moving. So, ultimately, winter campaigns can't be waged with Native Americans, so they're almost inevitably going to make the white Americans victorious, also total war, so, like, destroying, like, the crops and the, the land and all, and the Native Americans stuff. Again, there's not much you can do about that, because if the people are coming to burn all your stuff, there's not really much way you can combat it. So, again, all these brutal tactics are ways that the white American army could defeat the Native Americans and it kind of explains why it seems like the Native Americans didn't fight back that much but I mean inevitably they did fight back but they were just weren't strong enough militarily like the white Americans just had the advantage um the Native Americans relied on guerrilla warfare so like kind of like waiting out and then just like doing like surprise attacks that kind of tactic but although that i guess it's good for kind of like prolonging it doesn't isn't the strongest tactic for a military victory again explaining why they're more likely to lose and also because i think they the native americans employed that tactic because they couldn't really afford casualties because there's there's less of them anyway like the americans are already very few in number so they really can't afford having that much loss of life so they can employ the brutal war tactics that the American army can. So ultimately, white army are victorious in destroying Native American culture. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.